everyone, it's Laurie from Cook Scrap Craft. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a process video for you that is basically anything goes. And that just means that when I sat down to film this process video, I was just kind of like, mm, let's see what happens. I didn't really have a big plan in mind. And so you're just going to get to see me kind of do some experimentation and, um, and figure things out and just do my own thing. So there's no, you know, I wasn't inspired by anything from Pinterest. I'm not scrap lifting anything. It's just me putting stuff on a layout the way I want to. So the background of this is from the Crate Paper Sweater Weather Collection. And that was one of the few full 12 by 12 like Christmas pieces that I still had from the Christmas paper that I had. And I liked that because it, it's it's uh, it's kind of like a, a pink on red pattern. So to me, that's that's very close to being um, like a solid color since there's not a whole lot of extra colors and, and things. It's definitely a big pattern, which I'll talk about more in a second, but um, there aren't that many colors. So uh, that's a, that's a nice, that's what makes a nice background for me, especially when I'm going to be using a lot of photos. And I had a lot of photos from a zoo trip that we took at the end of December the zoo by us does a holiday lights thing every holiday season. I'm sure you have a zoo by you that does something like that as well. So these are all photos from that. And these are more, so I have two sets of photos from this zoo trip and I divided them up into ones that were more holiday-y. So like they had a bunch of photo opportunities set up with a sleigh and some polar bear statues and anything with the lights. Those I kept together. And then ones that were more animal featurey, animal themed, you know, the photos of the kids looking at the animals or just the animals themselves, those were put separately in, um, in another pile. So those are going to be on a different layout. I just had a lot of photos and I needed to I needed to organize them in a way. So these are all like the holiday themed zoo photos. And I'm cutting them down. They were all four by six. And I'm cutting them down into two by two squares because I had some pink fresh paper and it featured two by two cut aparts. Well, I want to say they weren't exactly two by two. They were actually maybe a little bit bigger than two by two, which I find to be really annoying. Like, could you just make the cut aparts and um, a, a normal even length and width right because then since I, I couldn't really get a good measurement like my I have a ruler and obviously um I could have just marked the spot on the ruler but it was it wasn't like two and a quarter it was like between the the quarter line one of the lines between the quarter line and the two and I'm like that's just Ugh, that just bothers me. I can't handle it. So what I did was I cut the um, pink fresh paper squares that I wanted to use and I traced using a dry erase marker right on top of the photos. So it actually gives the two, the pink fresh squares um, a black border, almost like I inked the edges. And then the dry erase marker, um, I'm cutting on the inside of that line. But even if the dry erase marker did end up on the photo somewhere, you just wipe it off with like a tissue or um, a paper towel. So it's really, really easy. And I'm pretty sure you could do this with any dry erase marker. The one I happen to use, and of course I can't find it right now, but it's from um, Leah France. And it's been a really long time since I have worked with Leah France stencils. But she is a, I guess, I think a French um, scrapbooker who I don't I guess she moved to the United States and like didn't see the same type of scrapbooking that they were that she was doing here so it's basically these big 12 by 12 stencils and I should whip them out and do another process and do an updated process video with these but you can you can use the stencils in multiple ways so there are different designs that you can create with each stencil I only have one but you can, it lets you cut your photos into different sizes, you cut your pattern paper into different sizes, and you create these very unique shapes. Now it's much, much different than the type of scrapbooking that I do, maybe the type of scrapbooking that you're used to, but it, it is a very interesting look. And um, I think one of the reasons why I don't use them more is just because 
it's not really my favorite style of scrapbooking. I like to, you know, do stuff like this where I'm moving things around on the page. I'm not, I mean, I guess I'm making a design. I'm making something that looks cool. And But these stencils, you're really making a design with the pattern papers and the photos. Um, but there's also not a lot of room, I think, for doing the embellishments in the way that I like. I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll break out the stencils again sometime and, um, and you can see, although I'm sure that I have um, a couple process videos that I did several years ago when I first got the stencil. So um, look back through the channel if you want to find those and I'll work on trying to create something new with those stencils so you can see. At first I need to find where I put my Leah France dry erase marker. I thought I put it back in my pen holder but I'm not seeing it there. So that either means that I put it somewhere else, it fell on the floor, or my kid came through and used it and did something. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyway, so that's just some little tidbit of information kind of went off on a tangent there about the dry erase marker but I'm sure if you needed to trace on top of your photo a regular dry erase marker would be just fine as well. So because this pattern even though I said before it's it reminds me of a solid color because the pattern is big I wanted to have something kind of backing the photos just to make the photos and these pink fresh squares pop a little bit more against that background. So I took some other pink fresh Christmas photo, Christmas paper, and I started backing my photos. Now they're going to have different, uh, they're going to have different mattings because I didn't have enough of that blue paper. So I'm also using that sort of stripey paper, which is also from pink fresh. So it's still part of the same collection. Um, the top photos that I matted, I felt like it needed a little banner thing, right? So I just cut one there. Um, the next set of photos is actually going off the page. And that's going to be mimicked again um, in, a, in, in a group of photos down at the bottom of the page. I just kind of like when things look off center. Um, nothing is going to be perfectly lined up and balanced on this layout. It's very much a... I don't know. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's it's a an it's an asymmetrical type of layout, and I just I just wanted it to be kind of funky and fun, and um, and and have some movement to it. I guess is what is what's going on, right? So I've got the two photos at the top with the blue, two photos to the side also on the blue. No banner. They're going off the page. Then there's a banner with the striped paper in the opposite direction. And I think it's, it might be a, a little bit smaller than the one on top. It is like right underneath, but then you've got that, that other one that goes off the page, which is kind of like in the center. So that's sort of like a grouping of threes right there, kind of doing a, a triangle thing with the rule of threes. And then I'm going to do another grouping of two underneath that striped banner and that one's going to kind of be going off the page a little bit. Um, I have a lot of photos, a lot of photos that I need to do here. And then there's going to be a, another one down at the very bottom because I was using up what paper I had left. It's going to look like it's kind of coming up from the bottom of the page as opposed to going off the side. So I hope that this is all making sense to you as you're watching this um, and that you understand like the the process or the thinking behind the process and that you maybe try your hand at something like this um, you don't have to do the matting and the banners and everything like that you can just try to create uh, like a grid with the the two by two pieces that your photos and your cut aparts um, you could do something that is balanced and symmetrical if that's more your thing you could like w like with what I was saying with the Leah France stencils you could create a shape with a, a symmetrical shape with your two by two pieces. So other ways that you could do this if you wanted to do something with these smaller sizes of cut aparts and photos, no matter what, don't be afraid to cut your photos down. I know it's hard. It was really hard for the photo that I had that was a four by six and it was like the entire zoo from above. I had to cut it down, guys. I had to cut it down to be used on this layout. And I'm okay with that because I still got the... Um, the lights that spelled out the the zoo name and you still saw a lot of like the holiday themed stuff in that section the rest of it was just extra and it's okay that I had to throw that in the trash because I really really wanted to do these these smaller two by two sizes so don't be afraid to cut down your photos even if you're printing them in four by six you could edit your photos on your computer and and 
crop them down and then print them in a smaller size, that would be totally fine as well. Um, that's just, <laughs> that takes too much time for me. And my computer is, my computer is slow and annoying and I just don't want to deal with that. So I've just been printing them through Shutterfly in 4x6 or 4x4, as you've seen in some of the other recent process videos. Um, because those are free to print through the app and all you have to do is pay for shipping. So it's kind of a great deal. Um, and that's what's easiest for me right now. So, um, like I said, don't be afraid to cut your photos down. If you're being inspired by this to do that, uh, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up like, and that if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, you do so, so you don't miss out on other process videos. I gotta tell you, next week is a two for a week because there'll be the regular Tuesday process video where I will be using up scrap pieces to create a layout. And then the next day is the off the board challenge for September. So you don't wanna miss out on that to see what, what I chose from Pinterest to inspire me and what other people chose from their Pinterest boards. It's a really fun hop. So I hope that you guys uh, hop along with us and um, get inspired to go to your own Pinterest boards. It's really fun. So that's coming up next week, just FYI. So again, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and you'll be all good. All right, so I've got all the photos and stuff down, adhered, ready to go. Now it's time to do embellishments. And speaking of using leftover pieces and stuff from my stash, I went through my stash and you probably saw in a recent video where I didn't have a whole lot of Christmas embellishments left over. So I went through my embellishment stash and I found some pretty little studio numbers that had been part of Christmas collection. And I was like, oh, I can use these. They're circular numbers. They can pretty, you can pretty much use them for anything. They don't have to be Christmas themed. Obviously this is a Christmas themed layout, but I was like, I should find a way to use them. So there's a 28 up there, which is perfect because we went to the zoo on December 28th. So I'm, I'm definitely going to bring that 28 piece back in, even though I just took it out, but I swear I'm gonna bring it back in. I had to check the date because I couldn't remember like when, <laughs> when we went. It's been so long. Obviously uh, I'm scrapbooking this in September. So uh, it's been a while since we went to the zoo. Um, and then I found some old doodle bug winter themed stickers. So there's like moose and hot cocoa cups. And I don't know, there were like rabbits and sparkly hearts and stuff. And I thought, you know what, those could be perfect because this was taken in winter, right? So, um, you know, you can find stuff in your embellishment stash that can be used in different ways and just really get creative. Now, some of the, the doodle bug stuff, like there were skis and a ski lift, um, I'm not gonna use those because I don't ski. So I just ended up throwing those away. I used everything that I could from that collection and then I threw like three stickers away. No big deal, not gonna worry about it. Um, you can see I also used another one of those pretty little studio circles. It has a plus sign on it. I don't know what that means. I'm just using it as decoration because yeah, and just something you might have noticed as I was putting the photos down, some of the photos have um, a post-it, a strip of post-it over them. That's just to cover up other kids in the photos just for privacy purposes. So those will be coming off. They're not part of the layout. They will be coming off at the end. Um, I'm creating just a little bit of an embellishment cluster over there, a space to put down the date. There's the 28 making an appearance yet again. Again, I like to do clusters or embellishments in clusters of three. I don't know, I guess there's a, the rule of threes, which is like an art thing. It's just something that I've learned over the years from watching other scrapbookers. Um, so that's just a, a tip that I always like to pass along if it's something you've never heard of. Just think of the rule of threes. And then once you know that rule, you can of course break it, <laughs> which I'm sure I've done uh, many times before. So yeah, basically the rest of this video is figuring out placement for embellishments and cre giving each um, pair of photos their own little cluster. And also trying to use up as much of those embellishments as I possibly can, just so that I can get rid of them, you know, make room for new stuff. Don't be afraid to use your embellishments. Um, go embellishment heavy. I love, I love going embellishment heavy. And uh, sometimes I need to know when to stop, but I do like, I do like doing embellishments. So I'm just trying to figure out 
where to put everything, how to use as much as I possibly can. One of the doodle bug embellishments said warm and cozy, and I ended up using that as part of the title, kind of down below. I also, part of that title is the doodle bug sticker, and then the other part says let's get, and that's actually from one of the Simple Stories crafty themed collections. So those are chipboard stickers that I just peeled off from that collection, and I put them onto this page. So the title is let's get warm and cozy, which I thought was pretty appropriate. And then I'm doing the journaling and that journaling spot there, the 28 is serving as the reminder of the date that these photos were taken. And then the close-ups are gonna follow. So I hope you can see a little bit more dimension that some of these things were popped up on foam dots. Um, and I hope that this video just inspires you to create in it with a, with a smaller size of photos and papers um, on a large scale. So let me know down below if you have any questions um, and just, uh, just come back next week and I'll see you then. Bye.